Thank you, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So as I mentioned, like our topic for this seminar is Harinam Chintamani. Harinam Chintamani is a book written by Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Bhakti Vinod Thakur mentioned that he found some manuscripts written by one of Haridas Thakur's followers and he actually noted down the instructions of Haridas Thakur in that. And based on those instructions of Haridas Thakur on the holy name, Haridas Bhakti Vinod Thakur wrote this book, Harinam Chintamani. And at the introduction of the book, Bhakti Vinod Thakur pointed out that this book is not meant for ordinary people. This book is exclusively meant for those who have accepted Krishna consciousness wholeheartedly. Because this book is speaking about the whole the holy name and its effect. What is the holy name? And what happens when one takes shelter of the holy name? So at the beginning we will just briefly discuss about Haridas Thakur and before that also Bhakshila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Bhakti Vinod Thakur, how many of you know of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur? Okay, very good, most of you know. Still, how many of you would like to hear about Bhakti Vinod Thakur? Okay. Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur was a very important government officer in the late or you can say middle 19th century. Bhakti Vinod Thakur is a very educated person uh, holding a very important government position at a time when India was under the British rule. And Bhakti Vinod Thakur was a deputy magistrate. A handful of Indian had such an exalted position those days. Bhakti Vinod Thakur was one of them. Although he was holding a very important position in the British government, Bhakti Vinod Thakur became a follower of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Bhakti Vinod Thakur came across a devotee and from that devotee, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur got to know about Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his teachings. Those days in Bengal, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings were practically lost. And in the name of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings, what was going on was very, very unfortunate. In the name of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, people were indulging in all kinds of unethical activities. So much so that no cultured gentleman would want to have anything to do with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his 
and his culture. So at a time like that, Bhakti Vinod Thakur became aware of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings and the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's greatness that he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So uh, Bhakti Vinod Thakur naturally became interested in Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and wanted to know more about Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But searching all over Bengal, he couldn't find a copy, a single copy of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. He heard that Chaitanya, Maha, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's life and precepts, life and teachings have been presented in this Chaitanya Charitamrita in a most brilliant way by Srila Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami. So he naturally became interested to read about Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but he couldn't find a single copy of Chaitanya Charitamrita. Finally, he found one copy of Chaitanya Charitamrita in Orissa. In the whole of Bengal, he couldn't find a single copy of Chaitanya Charitamrita. So he got this copy of Chaitanya Charitamrita and he started to, uh, I mean, when he saw what a brilliant uh, spiritual understanding and what a brilliant life that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu led. So he started to print the Chaitanya Charitamrita with his commentary which is known as Amrita Prabhaha Bhashya, meaning a flow of uh, nectar. The commentary that is a flow of nectar. With that commentary he started to print Chaitanya Charitamrita and started to teach Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's uh, teachings. So this is how when uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings was lost completely, Bhaktivinoda Thakur came to revive his teachings. An interesting thing to note here is that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to distribute Krishna consciousness and he did. During his time, he spread Krishna consciousness all over India. The whole of India became inundated with Krishna consciousness during his time. But soon after his disappearance, his teachings and his dham, Navadip, Mayapur, disappeared. His teachings, got disapp- teachings disappeared and his dham also disappeared. There was a massive flood and the flood wiped out the whole of Navadip. Nothing was left. And later on some unscrupulous people started to claim that certain piece of land to be the land of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes, Mayapur. Now when Bhakti Vinod Thakur started to explore the dham of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he saw that the description in the scriptures was not tallying with what is going on as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's birthplace and the place of his pastimes. So there was a dilemma in Bhaktivinoda Thakur's mind. So at a time like that, one night, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, who had his house incidentally by the time, Bhakti Vinod Thakur got a position as the deputy magistrate of that area of Krishnanagar, area which Mayapur was a part of that. And he uh, was staying on a, in a house in that area on the bank of the river Saraswati. And one night when he was working, 
with his secretary sitting on the roof, he saw the other side of the river lit up with a beautiful light. And he had the vision of a transcendental city where many devotees were chanting the holy name of the Lord. So that vision was so sudden. So he asked his secretary whether he saw anything. And his secretary just said no. But his son, Bhakti Siddhanta Swarishwati Thakur was there, so he asked him whether he saw something. And he admitted he also had the same vision. On the other side of the river, there's a beautiful city with many temples and all kinds of divine looking personalities uh, of different complexions. Uh, brown, white, black, they are all for chanting the holy name. So they had the vision at night. So the next morning, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur went across the river and went to the place where he saw the, where he had, where it seemed that, that he had the location of the vision. So he went there and he found that it was actually a village of the Muslims. He asked the name of the village. They said the name of the village is Miyapur. Uh, Mia in Arabic language means Mr. <laughs> and it was a typical Muslim name. Uh, so Bhaktivinoda Thakur and then he had a wonderful, unusual sight. He saw that there was a neem tree and there is a wonderful growth of tree, tulasi trees, tulasi plants around that neem tree. And it was unusual. Usually the, in the Muslim areas, there is no, they don't grow tulasi. Now under the neem tree, there is this huge uh, growth of tulasi uh, bushes. So he suspected that probably this is the place where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu really appeared. Because he already had this, con this doubt in his mind because Bhakti Ratnakar is giving a clear description of Chaitan, of Mayapur, the birthplace of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu on the eastern bank, uh, eastern side of the river Ganges. But what was going on at that time as Mayapur was on the western bank of the river. And then he found that other places uh, that has been described, they all were on the eastern side of the river, not on the western side of the river. Yes. So at that time there was another uh, very, very exalted Vaishnava personality, that is Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj at that time was 140 years old. He couldn't even stand up. He did not move. Uh, his, he couldn't even see, like he couldn't see in the sense the lid uh, covered his eyes, the upper lid covered his eyes and in such a way he couldn't even lift his upper lid. Uh, if he wanted to see then he had to physically lift the lid <laughs> of his eyes and see. So, he was so old and so incapacitated that one of his disciples uh, used to carry, he was a very healthy, strong person. When he had to go to some place, he used to put him in a basket and carry him on his head. That is how he used to uh, take Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. 
So, so Jagannathas Babaji Maharaj was so old and so Bhakti Vinod Thakur went to Jagannathas Babaji Maharaj and requested him to come and identify, see where, what, whether this could be the place of Mahaprabhu's pastimes. So Jagannathas Babaji Maharaj was brought in I, <clears throat> and I was just thinking at the back of my mind, did I say Bhakti Vinod Thakur was 140 years old or? Uh, I said Jagannathas Babaji Maharaj, okay. So Jagannathas Babaji Maharaj was brought in and surprisingly, where as soon as Jagannathas Babaji Maharaj was brought to that place, Jagannathas Babaji Maharaj, who couldn't even uh, stand up, he jumped up and started to dance in ecstasy, jumping up feet, feet high on the air, saying, this is the place of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's appearance. This is the place of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's appearance. So that is why, huh? how many of you remember Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj's prayer? Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj's prayer goes like, Gora Bir Bhavo Bhumestvan Nirdishta Sajjana Priya. The one who indicated the appearance place of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that is Jagannanda Babaji Maharaj. Not only Bhaktivinoda Thakur had the vision, but that vision was confirmed by Srila Jagannanda Babaji Maharaj, the most exalted Vaishnava. At that time, Vaishnava Sarvabhoma. Uh, Sarvabhoma means most elevated. Among the kings, these are the titles. The ruler of the entire earth planet is known as Sarvabhoma. The thing goes like king, uh, then monarch. In English also you have that expression. Uh, Raja, Maharaja, then Shamrat, uh, then finally Sarvabhoma, uh, Adhipati, uh, the supreme ruler of the planet. So in the world of the Vaishnav community, Bhakti Gaurkishore Das Babaji Maharaj was considered to be the most exalted Vaishnava. So that Gaur Kishore Das Babaji Maharaj uh, identified this birthplace of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So this is how we see uh, Bhakti Vinod Thakur retrieved not only Mahaprabhu's teachings, but he retrieved also the birthplace, the place of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes. Even now, when you go uh, to Mayapur, there is a group of people. Uh, so-called Vaishnavas, they claim that that is Prachin Mayapur. Uh, the old Mayapur, the original Mayapur is on the other side. They don't accept. Hmm. And then Bhaktivinoda Thakur, uh, he did not just accept it in that way. He was a deputy magistrate. He had access to all the government papers and maps and things. And from the maps also he established that this was actually the place. And there are so many such proofs. Like, <clears throat> although Navadip disappeared, uh, but that village is still recognized. Miyapur has been converted. Uh, but the Miyapur actually was the name of Mayapur. Mayapur has been converted into Mirapur by the Muslims there. And there are so many other, there is a, uh, uh, the Chatkazi's family who um, was there, is still there. Uh, and when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to encounter with Chatkazi, there is no description of crossing the river. Um, they just came there, 
straight walked to that place and uh, Chatkas this place is still there, Chatkas this Samadhi is still there. Hmm. So that is another proof. In this way there are various proofs. And then later on Bhakti Vinod Thakur actually painstakingly discovered different places of Mahaprabhu's pastimes. Nowadays when we go to Mayapur, uh, we get to see the places of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes and Nithyananda Prabhu's pastimes there. So this is how hmm, Bhakti Vinod Thakur revived Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings. And he uh, reconfirmed the gift of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu through this particular book. Why did Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu come? Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to distribute Krishna Prem. And what was the means of distributing Krishna Prem? The means of distribution Krishna Prem was the holy name. How can one get Krishna Prem? He came to distribute Krishna Prem. Namo Mahavadanaya Krishna Prema Pradayate. Uh, Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gaurakti Shenam. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to distribute Krishna Prem. But how did he distribute that Krishna Prem? Through the holy name. And this has been elaborately explained through this Harinam Chintamani. That how the chanting of the holy name leads to achieving Krishna Prem. And it goes further into different types of, I mean, the, uh, the deep meditation in Krishna's, uh, uh, Krishna consciousness, deep meditation in Krishna's pastimes and so forth. We won't go into that. We'll just cover the, uh, the only the Nama Tattva, the signs of the holy name. Now that also leads us to understanding who is Haridas Thakur. Hmm. Do you all remember Krishna's pastimes of killing Aghasura? I'm sure all of you no, still, how many of you would like to hear about Haridas Thakur? Okay. So, <clears throat> Krishna killed Agasura. Agasura was such a terrible demon that even the demigods used to tremble in fear just by hearing his name. Now, this Agasura was a friend of Kamsa. And Kamsa was trying to kill Krishna. So, Kamsa sent Agasura to kill Krishna. Agasura assumed uh, the form of a huge snake, huge python. And his purpose or his intention was that he would swallow Krishna along with his friends. He would swallow them and kill them. So, <clears throat> Agasura was uh, lying on the path of Vrind on, in Vrindavan and the path where Krishna would be coming with his cowherd boys and the calves. Krishna at that time was only about five years old. And the five years old uh, in the cowherd community, they begin their apprenticeship. Uh, they start to tend the calves. They are children, so they take care of the uh, children of the cows. And so they took the calves and along with Krishna's, like along with his friends. And on the way, 
they saw Aghasura, but he was so huge that it, he looked like uh, his mouth gaping wide open appeared to be like a cave of a mountain. And these children became excited. Oh, we found a new cave that he had never seen before. And saying that, they all just uh, entered into the mouth of that uh, serpent. And Agasura was just waiting for Krishna to come in. Krishna could understand. And he was worried that all these children have entered into, all my friends have entered into Agasura's mouth. Now they'll die along with the calves. So Krishna was wondering what to do. And finally, he stepped into Agasura's mouth. And as soon as Krishna, he did that, Agasura closed his mouth. And Krishna just expanded himself. Can Krishna expand himself? Can Krishna do whatever he wants to do? Huh? So he expanded himself to such an extent that Agasura couldn't swallow him. Agasura assumed a huge form of a serpent, but Krishna became so big uh, that he couldn't swallow him. And not only that, Krishna started to emit uh, heat from his body. Can Krishna do that? Uh, can you imagine? Uh, 100 degree, 200 degree, 500 degree, uh, really red hot. Now Agasura tried to spit Krishna out, but Krishna got stuck in his throat. And Agasura just started to writhe in pain. And he wanted to leave his body, but his mouth was closed, his backside was closed, so he couldn't, his soul couldn't leave his body. So finally his, his soul left the body piercing his Brahmarandra. Uh, there is a uh, hole on the upper part of the brain that is called Brahmarandra. The yogis actually leave their bodies through Brahmarandra and this is how they merge into Brahma Jyoti. Now just by being killed by Krishna, Agasura achieved the perfection that the yogis achieve after thousands of years of perfection. And not only he just left his body, he was just hovering on the space uh, and he, until Krishna came out of his mouth. And when Krishna along with his cowherd boys and calves came out, Agasura's soul just entered into Krishna's body. Brahma was watching and he was surprised. His first reason for surprise was, who is this boy that this demon was so terrible that even the demigods used to tremble with fear just by hearing his name? Who is this demon uh, who is this boy that killed this demon so easily, without any effort, effortlessly he killed him. And not only that, but after, be, after he left his body, his soul entered into his body. So who is this boy? So Brahma naturally considered, is he my Lord and Master Narayan? So Brahma kept on watching what these boys would do, let's see. So, after that, uh, playfully, Krishna, along with his friends, took the calves, went to the bank of Jamuna, and he let the calves graze in the pastry. And, and then, after that, they opened their uh, food basket and that they brought from home, and they started to have their 
breakfast, they started to have the picnic. And during that time, Brahma saw that these boys were just uh, sharing their food with Krishna. And Krishna joyfully eating their remnants. Some boy took a bite of some sweets that his mother made. And he said, Hey Krishna, Krishna, my mother made such a delicious sweet. See uh, how delicious it is. And he gave his half-eaten sweet to Krishna. And Krishna accepted that. And Krishna said, yes, yes, that's wonderful. And when Krishna gave that, uh, the rem remaining part on the plate, another friend became curious to find out how tasty it was. So he said, Krishna, Krishna, look at the bird there. And when Krishna looked at the bird, he uh, <laughs> took that piece from his plate and started to eat it. So seeing that, Brahma became completely so bewildered. Who is that? The Narayan is taking the remnants, I mean, this boy is taking the remnants, so he cannot be Narayan, because Narayan cannot take anyone's remnant, and no one will ever dare to give any rem his remnants to Narayan. So when this way, Dev Brahma was thinking, then Brahma thought that, okay, let me check it out, who this boy is. So Brahma stole the calves. And all of a sudden, these boys noticed that the calves are not to be seen. So they became very worried. Oh, where did the calves go? Then Krishna said, okay, you all carry on eating your food. I'll go and find out. Maybe they have just entered into the forest. So Krishna went looking for the calves and when he came, but he couldn't find them. So when he came back, he found that the cowherd boys are also missing. So <clears throat> he just started to wonder what's the matter. The calves are gone, my uh, boyfriends are gone. So then Brahma, uh, Krishna realized that this is the doing of Brahma. So he uh, decided to teach Brahma some wonderful lesson. Oh, you are trying to check me out. Okay, see who I am. So Krishna just expanded himself into all the calves and all the cowherd boys. Can Krishna do that? Why? Because he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And in the meantime, Brahma took the calves and cowherd boys and kept them in a yoga nidra, in slumber, in sleep, in a mountain cave. And putting them in sleep under the mountain, in the mountain cave, when Brahma turned around and he saw the same scene. For Brahma, it took just one second. But our, in, according to the earthly calculation, it was one year. One year actually went by. And when looked back, Brahma looked back the same day, uh, and he saw that these cowherd boys are having um, their picnic and the calves are grazing. So Brahma became very surprised that what's happening, what's the matter? Then Brahma saw that he looked into the cave and he saw that all the calves and cowherd boys are fast asleep there. And then when this time when he looked back, he found that they all are four-armed Narayans. All the calves are Narayan, all the uh, cowherd boys are Narayan. And Krishna sitting in the middle, having the picnic, the same way. So this is how Brahma, and Brahma thought at that time, I know one Narayan. Now who is he that he could 
uh, multiply himself into so many Narayans. So he must be the origin of all Narayans. And that is how Krishna's identity was revealed to Brahma. So then Brahma realized that he made a great mistake. So Brahma fell at his feet, Krishna's feet, begging forgiveness. Krishna forgave him and Krishna also revealed his golden form. Brahma questioned, I have never seen this form before. He said, yes, I'll come in this form in the age of Kali, in the following Kali Yuga. So Brahma begged, will you please allow me to also be a part of your pastimes? Krishna said, fine, you can come. Then Brahma said, I have another request. That I, as Brahma, the greatest of all the personalities in the universe, I develop some pride that I am the greatest. And as a result of that, I forget you. I even dare to challenge you, dare to question your identity. Therefore, please don't give me an exalted birth. Please allow me to be born in a uh, low-class family. Allow me to have a low-class birth. And as a result of that, uh, Brahma appeared as Haridas Thakur in a Muslim family. Haridas Thakur hmm, appeared in a village called Budhan Gram in a district called Satkshira, which is in East Bengal now. And somehow, hmm, no one really knows how Haridas Thakur actually got the holy name and developed his holy name. Of course, we have to understand that it is, he is Lord Brahma. And so, it is from his previous Sukriti that he came into that position. And he developed an intense attachment to the holy name. Although he was born in a Muslim family, he was very fond of chanting the holy name. And due to his attachment to the holy name, he actually left home. And he came to a solitary place and he used to constantly chant the holy name. He left home because he didn't want any disturbance. He did not have any mundane attachment to hinder his commitment to the holy name. So he used to chant the whole day and night and people of the place became so attracted to him that they started to sing his glory. So there was a very envious landlord, very wealthy person and he became envious that people are becoming so attached to Harim so attracted to Haridas Thakur. So he decided to uh, blemish the reput reputation of Haridas Thakur. So he got a prostitute, very beautiful prostitute, to go and make him fall down. And he arranged that he will send the soldiers with her. And as soon as he would fall down, then he, he would arrest Haridas Thakur and punish him. So, but this girl said, no, don't send anybody, I'll just go by myself. And so, so she went in the middle of the night, came to the hut of Haridas Thakur and she proposed that, oh, you are so handsome young man. I have become so attracted to you that unless and until I get your 
association unless and until we get your touch, I'll kill myself. So Haridas Thakur said, fine. But you see, every day I chant certain number of rounds of the holy name. So soon I'll be finishing. So after finishing my rounds, after finishing my chanting the holy names, uh, I will fulfill your desire. So she just sat there and Haridas Thakur kept on chanting. And uh, the night was over, sun rose, the day broke. So I just had to say, I'm so sorry. So, uh, come again uh, tonight. Uh, I'll fulfill your desire. So second night also, the same thing happened. And on the third night, just by hearing Haridas Thakur's chanting, just by getting this association of Haridas Thakur, the heart of this prostitute was completely purified. She recognized her mistake and she fell at his feet and she admitted what actually, what was the purpose of her coming. She told him everything. Haridas Thakur said, yes, I already knew that. And I would have left that time only. But it's because of you that I stayed on because I wanted to deliver you. So this is the compassion of a Vaishnava. And <clears throat> so Haridas Thakur instructed her that you give up your sinful occupation all the money that you have earned in this sinful way, you distribute it among the Brahmanas and Vaishnavas. And you come here and you chant the holy name of the Lord. And Haridas Thakur left. And this <clears throat> lady did that. And she became a great Vaishnavi. Haridas Thakur left and came to the uh, 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 a place called Fulia and there he had the association of Advaita Acharya Thakur. Incidentally, Haridas Thakur was about 35 years older than Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Haridas Thakur, Advaita Acharya also was an old person at that time. So this all had this all happened before, long before Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's appearance. So Haridas Thakur started to stay on a cave in that place, Fulia, in a quiet, solitary place. There was a cave and he was staying there. And many people used to come to see him. And, but to hear from him. But when they would come, they would feel some burning of the skin. And so they couldn't understand why that was happening. Uh, that they would feel some intense burning sensation. So one day, uh, they took one uh, uh, snake charmer, or rather an expert who is in this art of activities of the snake, and that person actually, they thought there must be some sort of poison there. And when they took that person there, that person told that there is an extremely dangerous, extremely poisonous snake in that cave. So hearing that, all the people just uh, left. Seeing them leaving and hearing that the snake is staying there, uh, so Haridas Thakur said, okay, I'll let the snake have his own cave. He decided to move. But even the snake was so impressed 
by this behavior of Haridas Thakur, he couldn't say, well, no, 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 you stay here, I'll leave. But then very soon they saw a huge uh, snake, a king cobra, just sliding out of the cave. So in this way there were you know, various wonderful activities of Haridas Thakur that he displayed even before Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's appearance. Sometimes Haridas Thakur used to visit um, one of his acquaintance, uh, Jagannandan Acharya. He was the, the family priest of Raghunath Das Goswami's family. Raghunath Das Goswami's father and grandfather were extremely wealthy persons extremely wealthy person. Their wealth was like even greater than a king's. And so Jadunandan Acharya was a family priest. And Haridas Thakur sometimes used to visit him. So one day Jadunandan Acharya took him to Raghunath Das Goswami's house. And there, there was an assembly of like wealthy, uh, pe pious people often would invite the learned uh, scholars and brahmanas to have, to hear from them about the conclusion of the scriptures. So in that assembly, the discussion started about the holy name. So some started to say, that the holy name is the means to become free from sinful activities. Holy name is the means to acquire piety. Holy name is the means to achieve liberation. So to that, Haridas Thakur replied that the liberation that cannot be achieved by millions of lifetimes of Brahman realization just by the Namabhar's chanting, not even the pure chanting of the name, where there is the impression of chanting, Abhash, one becomes liberated. Koti Janma Brahma Jnani Jai Mukti Noi Shudhu Matru Namabhashe Shai Mukti Hai Koti Janma, meaning Koti One Crore means 10 millions. The liberation that cannot be achieved by 10 millions of uh, Brahman realization, 10 millions of birth of Brahman realization, just by the age of chanting, one achieved that liberation. So there was a Brahmana named Gopal Chakravarti. So generally Brahmanas are very proud of their exalted birth. So he protested. What are you talking about? Do you know what is, what is Brahman realization? What do you know? Why are you making, how, how dare you make such comments? And so this actually led to some sort of discussions. And this Brahmana became so offensive that he told that if that is true, if that what you, are, what you are saying is true, I'll cut off my nose. And if it is not true, then you have to cut off your nose. It was a kind of a challenge. So Haridas Thakur very humbly offered obeisances to him and left that place. And in three days' time, that Brahmana developed leprosy and his nose, he didn't have to cut, use a knife to cut his nose off. Huh? By Krishna's arrangement, his nose fell off. So, in his early days, in his young days, 
Raghunath Das Goswami actually had the association of Haridas Thakur. That is how he actually developed uh, attachment to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the Holy Name. And in this way, Haridas Thakur had many such wonderful activities. Anyway, since I started, uh, maybe I can also speak about maybe two very important uh, happenings in Haridas Thakur's life. Haridas Thakur was uh, staying. Haridas Thakur was very close to Advaita Acharya. And Advaita Acharya was a very exalted Brahmana in that, at that time, recognized for his very exalted position in the society. And there was Aditya Acharya's shra- father's Shraddha ceremony was going on. And after the Shraddha, it is the custom that the Shraddha Patra, the offering, uh, the first offering of Prashad, is offered to the most exalted personality. Mm. So this is the mm, Vedic culture. Like you remember when Yudhishthir Maharaj performed Rajasuya Jagya, eh, who they decided to offer that Argha or the most distinguished honorable person recognition? Krishna. And Shishupal became upset. So when Advaita Acharya offered that position to Haridas Thakur, the Brahmana community became very upset. That look, we are such exalted Brahmanas and disregarding us, he offered this most distinguished position to a Muslim. That must have been such a revolutionary act on, <laughs> on the part of Advaita Acharya. So, <clears throat> they decided to ostracize Advaita Acharya from the Brahman community. And Advaita Acharya couldn't care less. <laughs> because what all these nonsensical, smart Brahmanas decide, the Vaishnava doesn't care about that. But one strange thing happened to the village at that time. The fire disappeared. All the fire got extinguished. Not only the sacrificial fire, uh, the cooking fire disappeared, the lamp fire disappeared. There was no fire in the whole place. They were surprised what's happening. They thought that they'll bring the fire from outside. From some other village they brought the fire. But as soon as they came to the vicinity of the village, the fire got extinguished. So they could presume that something, some offenses must have been made to Haridas Thakur, uh, to uh, Advaita Acharya. So they approached Advaita Acharya and told him that, look, this is what is happening. No fire in the house. So Advaita Acharya said, why? You are like Brahmanas. The fire should stay in your mouth. Because by chanting mantra you can uh, ignite fire. That's the qualification of a Brahmana. Just by chanting mantra they can ignite fire. So he said, yes, you all are so, such Brahmanas. So what happened? Where is your Brahmanical qualification? So they all say, so we must have committed an offense to you, that's why it's happening, please forgive us. So Advaita Acharya said, no, you didn't commit any offense to me. You committed offense to Haridas Thakur. So go and beg forgiveness from him. And then some description also goes like, 
Advaita Siddha told him that after begging forgiveness, uh, you take some straw and ask him to blow in on it, blow on the straw. So they took that, they begged forgiveness. As a Vaishnava, uh, Haridas Thakur's response was, no, 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 you didn't commit any offense. Uh, so what you said is right, after all, you know, I, am, I myself also was feeling so embarrassed that disregarding all the exalted Brahmanas, he just gave up, he just offered me that, uh, that distinguished recognition. And then the Brahmanas took some straw and said, can you please blow on this? And as soon as Haridas Thakur blew, all the straw got into fire, lit up in fire. So this is how Haridas Thakur's exalted position as the greatest of all the Brahmanas or even greater than the Brahmanas was established. The Muslim Nawab, actually it was the Kaji, the magistrate. Seeing Haridas Thakur's activities, he became very perturbed. And he reported to the king, Nawab, that uh, this Muslim is acting like a Hindu, so he should be punished. So the king called Haridas Thakur and asked him, see, you got such an exalted birth as a Muslim, so why aren't you taking advantage of your birth. Why are you, why did you adapt uh, the activities of a Hindu? So Haridas Thakur said, look, so many Muslims, so many Hindus are becoming Muslims. If one Muslim becomes a Hindu, what's the big loss? So he said, no, no, no. The Nawab said, no, no, no. Actually, this Muslim birth is so exalted that it should be considered as the greatest good fortune. And you should not degrade yourself to accept any other uh, faith. So in this discussion, Haridas Thakur expressed his inability to give up his attachment to the holy name. And finally he told him that, look, even if my body is cut into pieces, even if my life here leaves my body, still I won't be able to give up the holy name. So Nawab became very upset, very angry. He said, oh, is that so? So let's see how true is your statement. And he immediately called the executioners, Jallan, and said, take him to 22 marketplaces, and in public you beat him to death. Beat him in such a way that everybody can see the consequence of a Muslim becoming a non-Muslim, giving up his religion. So they took Haridas Thakur and they started to mercilessly beat him. But Haridas Thakur, true to his statement, just kept on chanting the holy name. Nothing would stop. They are beating him so mercilessly that even the bystanders, the people who are crying, people who are falling at the feet of those jallads and begging them, please let him go. We are, we'll give you so much money. We'll give you everything. Please let him go. Don't beat him like that. But still they wouldn't stop and they just kept on beating mercilessly. But Haridas Thakur just kept on chanting. So then finally these uh, executioners, whose business is to cut, kill people, uh, professional killers, so they <coughs> could recognize that he is an extremely elevated spiritual personality. So they fell at Haridas Thakur's feet and said, we can recognize that you are an extremely exalted personality. Now. We, the king has ordered us to kill you 
and if we fail in executing his order then he will kill us so please tell us what we should do so Haridas Thakur said oh you want me to die okay I will die so he laid down and there was no sign of life in his body so they tried to pick him up and carry him to the king but as they tried to pick him up they couldn't as if the end the weight of the entire universe came on him they not only tried themselves they have engaged 20 30 other people also but nobody could even lift him so then they started to cry oh if we can't carry you to the king the king will not believe us and he will kill us so then Haridas Thakur's body became light and they carried his body to the king and the king, the Muslim king said he is so sinful that he should get the good fortune of getting buried throw him in the river so they threw him in the Ganges so Haridas Thakur's body came floating in the Ganges and as it came to Shantipur he came out of the water and started to chant the holy name Advaita Acharya hearing that news what, has, what the king has ordered became very very worried and hearing the sound of Haridas Thakur's chanting he was so relieved he came out running and he embraced Haridas Thakur. The king eventually got the news what actually happened. And then he recognized Haridas Thakur's exact position. So, <clears throat> Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who came to distribute the holy name, he made Haridas Thakur the Acharya of the Holy Name. Therefore, another name of Haridas Thakur is Nam Acharya. Nam Acharya Srila Haridas Thakur Ki. So this Chaitanya, uh, Hari, sorry, Harinam Chintamani is based on the teachings of Haridas Thakur. Bhaktivinoda Thakur very brilliantly presented the, the glory of the Holy Name as it has been described by Haridas Thakur. So today I will stop now and I'll invite questions.